welcome to Resource PNG. We begin this episode in East Sipic Province. Since commencing operations in 2012, the Sipic Oil Palm Project has been welcomed by communities in the Turubu area. The oil palm development has opened the doors of government services, but more importantly, opportunities for communities to take part in spin-off benefits to improve their living. Recently, Sipic Oil Palm Project reached a new milestone with the commissioning of the project's mill. Tekla Gunga brings us this report. Turubu local level government is landlocked between the Yanguru and Angoram districts of East Sipic. With a population of over 15,000, people here live a simple lifestyle of subsistence farming. Since the establishment of the Sipic oil palm project in 2012, over 280 kilometers of road linking different villages within this LLG has been constructed, allowing more PMVs to travel into the inner Turubu villages. 200 kilometers is the length of the main road we have constructed in the province that form a part of the pillar infrastructure of the pro to the project. The second number, 150 million kina, is the amount of the capital we have invested on this province towards infrastructure and field establishment. The Sipic Oil Palm project started in 2012, following consultations between the different stakeholders, local landowners, the East Sipic Provincial Government, national government agencies, the PNG Forest Authority, Department of Environment and Conservation and the developer. The project is one of the biggest projects in the history of the province, stretching over three districts, Ngoram, Yanguru and Wiwek. It is being developed through a partnership comprising of a team of Malaysians as well as locals who have been trained in nurturing oil palm before they are transferred planted into oil palm fields. Now, me believe all time, this is a project by transforming life from people from WeWork, life from people from Sazaya, life from people from Angoram, life from people from East Sipi, now proper you can do one time. This shows how far this project stretches over the Sipic Plain. In April, Sipic Oil Palm Project reached another milestone, commissioning the construction phase of its own mill, an investment aimed at ensuring downstream processing, making it the highest source of revenue for the province. The commissioning was witnessed by a high-level political leaders, governors of East Sipic, Medang and Sundown, including Treasury Minister Patrick Purites. Because this project is an agricultural project, several measures have been taken by project stakeholders to ensure the operations comply with strict operating regulations and within the guidelines of the Environment and Forest Acts of PNG. The commissioning of the mill will mean more employment for locals and also an opportunity to increase economic opportunity within the district. In terms of employment, the project has so far created over 1,000 jobs for locals, 
both men and women. But there are opportunities in the future. And the number of the workers is expected to increase to 5,000 in this province by the next three years. In terms of revenue, the CIPIC oil pump project is expected to generate over 1 million kina annually. The project is aimed at improving the level of living for communities and also generating much needed income at a provincial level. During the groundbreaking ceremony for the mill, Ngoram MP Salio Waipo proposed to build a police station in Turubu to address the possible increase of social issues that may arise. His announcement signaled the support of the Angoram District Administration in bringing government services of health and education into Turubu. Since the establishment of the project, it has also created spin-off benefits for locals, allowing them to have birth certificates through the registering of incorporated land groups or ILGs. With that advantage, locals have opened up trade stores to sell store goods, including fuel. The Ngoram District Authority has gone one step further in supporting the project. 1.3 million kina has been invested to build infrastructure that will benefit the community. This funding is from the Ngoram District Support Improvement Program funds. With high expectations from locals in regards to benefits from the CIPIC oil palm project, Locals have been challenged to participate fully in the operations of the project through freeing up their land or engage in the spin of benefits that are associated to the project. On a larger scale, East Sipik is becoming a recognized oil palm producer, apart from traditional producers, West New Britain, Milne Bay and Northern provinces. With the commissioning of this mill, Sipik Oil Palm Project is slowly setting a strong economic foundation for the people of Thurubu, with opportunities for more income for the province and ultimately more government services into rural Turubu. Stay tuned for more of Resource PNG. Don't go away. Welcome back to Resource PNG. In our last episode, Edwin Fidelis brought to us a story on the comeback of cocoa in East New Britain province, with NGIP Agmark marking a milestone exporting cocoa to the Hayes factory in Australia, a great achievement for the cocoa industry in PNG. This week, Edwin Fidelis focuses on how the cocoa industry is making a comeback and its impact on smallholder farmers in East New Britain province. In the last two weeks, this is what it looks like at the Egg Magdalena Cocoa Processing Facility just a few kilometers outside of Kokopo Town. Vehicles are arriving at the wet bin buying point to sell their cocoa, a scenario that doesn't happen so much often here. There's been a sudden spike in cocoa beans purchased from small older cocoa growers last week and the week before. A kilogram of clean beans is fetching two kina, while unclean beans are fetching one kina fifty per kilogram. Me almost true lo. Price, price too. I'm saying company buy him good na. I'm making him build one lo place. Lo me block him kakao kam na. Me me drama to sol. Me sa karim kakao gonse lo block. Rasim kakao na kamar side. Nag magi buy. Na I'm walk blue me. Move him kakao kamar side. You block buy him na. One lo place kisim delik money me. Money me only lo. Thank you. 
ECMAC has recorded a total of more than 200,000 kilograms of wet cocoa beans purchased from farmers. That's equivalent to about 1,008 dry bean cocoa bags once it's processed. Its total value, half a million kina. Most of these cocoa are coming from small older growers in rural villages who contribute about 60% of the total cocoa production for the province. <laughs> The fermentry workers are racing against time to process the beans before the next lot arrives. But the fermentry is already facing a challenge. The spaces are getting smaller and the beans arriving are at a rate of 20 tons daily. This warehouse at the Egma Cocoa Processing Facility hasn't been used for nearly eight years and for the first time it has been opened to make way for the large quantity of cocoa that are arriving. To me, as in charge of this fermentry, you see, I've got cocoa sleeping around, which means I don't have enough space, but I'm struggling with it, so I'm trying my best to get all this cocoa into progress in orders in during the days. Inside the fermentry, it is evident. The boxes and dryers are almost filled to their brim. Much of the East New Britain cocoa ends up here, processed and then exported. It is one of the biggest in the country that has the capacity to process 20 tons every day. Estimation, yani all top, midland or site low management, also 2015, it's like crops will come, but then come now looks like here, where Emmy so input the result or right estimation, low farmers, what them all company, low site low cacao. So midland top, thank you, Lord. Also, good luck to the farmers. I think weather too, where it's a favorable weather, it helps to improve the production of the year now. And by local sun, the crop by local sun by set in up for June. I think by me go to September, it should pick up again. It is the first time for EGMA to see such volume since the inception of the Coco Port Borer disease that slashed the production volume by more than half and left the entire cocoa industry at the brink of collapsing. Egmark says the cocoa industry is making a comeback in a big way, and much of this good news has been attributed to the ongoing awareness and CPB management programs carried out by cocoa agencies in villages to encourage farmers not to give up hope in cocoa farming. And since last week, their efforts are slowly paying off. People by continue to work with Egmark, outspend all outspend na uh, all nara all stakeholders we we play work to promote ma cacao uh, CCIPNC uh, uh, UNRI IATP lo continue lo work ma lavenus na all uh, training lo improve ma production blue East New Britain is one of the largest cocoa producing provinces in the country but the infestation of the cocoa port borer disease had downplayed the industry making it unattractive to farmers this year, its glory days are slowly returning. Egmark's cocoa expert Graham McNally says it's an indication that farmers have now begun to master cocoa cultivation in the post-endemic CPB environment, managing the crop to give high yielding every season. Uh, all predictions are that the price will continue to increase uh, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So now would be a good time to plant cocoa, I think. Uh, cocoa port borer is I would say behind us now, uh, many, many farmers now know how to manage cocoa in the post-endemic CPB uh, situation. Uh, a lot of work has been done by many people in the last well, 10 years now since CPB first uh, was identified in PNG. Yeah. So I think the, the, the future is good, the price is good. Uh, yeah, I would recommend that people should plant cocoa trees now. In the last 10 years, Egmark's cocoa export has been severely impacted by a drop in volume due to the CPB that put the company at a position that hasn't been able to meet demand from overseas cocoa buyers. Cocoa analysts say CPB will not be eradicated, but its impacts can be overcome. For Egmark, the business is back. It has not revealed its export price, but at the local market, a dry bean cocoa bag is fetching more than 500 kina. While the business also looked good for small older farmers, 
EGMAC says it is also looking at meeting its export demand from overseas cocoa buyers that haven't been met in previous years. After the drying, a total of 1,108 bags just for the whole of last week uh, is ready for export and this will meet the requirement uh, that we did not meet last when the, our overseas buyers uh, did ask for. So we are quite happy for this uh, influx, for this sudden flash of uh, wet bean that has come in from small farmers, small older farmers, and that has really met what uh, we could not meet a couple of months ago. Watching Resource PNG after the break, industry updates on Resource News. Welcome back. Time now to take a look at what's being making headlines within PNG's resource sector. We begin on a sombre note with the death of Hela Governor Anderson Agiru. The late Governor Agiru died on Thursday, the 28th of April. Among his legacies is Papua New Guinea's first LNG project, the PNG LNG Project, a project which he was heavily involved in during his tenure as Southern Highlands Governor. Gulf Province Governor Havila Kavo has once again maintained a no-pipeline stance for the upcoming Papua LNG project. Speaking in Port Moresby recently, Governor Kavo also hit out at Papua LNG project developer Total, claiming that Total was carrying out a social mapping exercise in Gulf Province without the knowledge of provincial authorities. Total responded to these claims from Governor Kavo, saying, Total respects Governor Kavo as the duly elected governor of the Gulf Province. Since it has been appointed operator of PRL 15, Total has engaged along with joint venture partners, Interoil Corporation and Oil Search Limited with Gulf Province officials, including meeting governor and the 10 LLG presidents comprising the Provincial Assembly. Total has also held a number of community awareness programs in the project area footprint in 2015 and already in the first quarter of 2016, where officers from the Department of Petroleum and Energy travelled and provided an opportunity for the communities to ask questions directly of the oil and gas regulator. And finally, as you may have known, Indian President Pranab Mukherjee was in the country recently on a bilateral visit. Whilst in the country, President Mukherjee signed several MOUs in various fields, among them opportunities to develop Papua New Guinea's human resource. We've come to the end of this episode of Resource PNG. If you'd like to get in touch with us, email us on the address now showing on your screen. For all the latest updates on developments within the resource sector in the country, check out our Facebook page. To view this program again, log on to the MTV website where you will find a link to the Resource PNG page. Until the next time, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. <laughs>